Hi, I'm Jim Munro, and this is Sun Speed. It's been another astonishing week in the world of F1 in a season where there's been just as much action off the circuits as has been on them. Now, this week, Renault have been banned, albeit suspended for two years. Former team boss Flavio Briatore has been banned indefinitely, all for attempting to nobble the Singapore Grand Prix last season. Now, here to discuss all these dealings is the voice of Sun's motorsport, Chris Hockley. Now, Chris, Briatore seems to be banned to rights and... Uh, it's also going to affect his dealings with QPR Football Club. But uh, but for Renault, a suspended ban, I mean, they've been let off, haven't they? Well, Formula One bosses are nothing if not pragmatic, Jim. Uh, they need Renault in Formula One, that's the truth. Uh, they've got a major history in the sport. Well-respected company before, before all this blew up. Yeah. And um, there's a complication that they supply engines to some of the other teams as well, Red Bull. So uh, yeah. Formula One kind of needs Renault, um, and I think the suspended ban... Uh, is, is the answer for everybody. Um, we've seen the last of Briatore and, uh, unfortunately, Pat Simons as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think by, by doing that, by getting rid of Briatore and Simmons, they escaped uh, uh, the ultimate uh, punishment. Right. So, of course, uh, I hadn't thought about that. I was the layman. An expert such as yourself, and you know Renault was supplying the engines to other cars. That mm. would, of course, then have affected them supplying parts to these other cars, would it? Uh, we don't know about that yet. Um, I, I think they'll just carry on as normal now. Right. Um, uh, unfortunately, Red... that one under the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like that. I mean, yeah. that's really what everybody wanted to do. They, they, they wanted to see the back of Briatore and, and Simmons for what they did. Mm. Um, but uh, nobody really wants to see Renault disappear. That would be a bit harsh. Yeah. Well, of course, there's another problem associated with Briatore because he was actually a manager for the likes of Fernando Alonso and, and Mark Webber. And Nelson Piquet Jr., who uh, lifted the lid on, on all these practices, where, where do they stand now? Do, do we know yet how they will be affected? Well, it's not so much was, of course. He, he is the manager of uh, Weber mm. and, and Alonso. And who knows what's going to happen there. I, I think the guys won't really want to be associated with him anymore because his name is now uh, clearly mud. Um, what the legal machinations are in their contracts, uh, whether, whether they've got a get-out clause if something like this has gone on, yeah. remains to be seen, Jim. Um, we'll just have to wait on that one, I'm afraid. I mentioned uh, Nelson Piquet Jr. there. Um, where where is, does he stand in all of this? It's going to be very interesting to see what happens to him. He mm. might have to try and rebuild his career, obviously. Um, he seems to have been vindicated to a certain extent with his, his constant uh, discussions that he, he, he was being held back by Beatore and just, yeah. being, just being used as a sort of minor supporting role to Alonso and never got a fair crack of the whip in Formula One. However, of course, um, he's blown the gaff on the, on the whole thing and yeah. there'll be a lot of Formula One team bosses um, won't want to employ somebody who's going to let the cat out of the bag if, if things go sour. Right, so in other words, um, they won't want to hire him because he might tell the truth if he were to do the same thing again. Is that what we're saying? Uh, possibly. <laughs> well, because the other thing is, I mean, he did still go along with this. Yeah. Uh, and uh, no matter what amount of pressure you are under to do things like that, he did still go along with it. And he didn't actually start complaining until this season when he, he felt he wasn't getting a fair crack of the whip. So he did. It's, he it's did. not whiter than white, one No, he's not whiter than white. There was a tremendous amount of pressure on young shoulders there, I think, yeah. to keep the drive. But um, the other thing, you, you mentioned that uh, about team secrets, but mm. we're not just talking about dirty tricks here. We are also talking about technical secrets oh, that right, teams yeah. don't want to go from from one team to another. Yeah. And if they if, if a person is, is seen as untrustworthy yes. or, or is not not exactly untrustworthy because BK has done the right thing. Yeah. But um, but uh, is liable to spill the beans. Uh, mm. They might think twice. Right. Okay. Well, this is of course uh, a driver who we know quite well who won't be uh, sad to see the back of Briatore from F1. A certain Jensen Button. Yes. It's Talking about Button in uh, the year, I think it was 2000, 2001, when he drove for Benetton under Briatore. Yeah. Much the same thing happened to them. To him then, uh, he, he thought Briatore nearly destroyed his career because mm. he didn't give him much of a chance and just used him in a, a, a minor supporting role, like uh, I was just saying about Piquet. Yeah. Um, so, and also this year, Briatore uh, called him a concrete post after he'd won the... Uh, first two Grand Prix. Strange, right. uh, strange analogy. Very but, fast uh, concrete. Yes, yeah, very fast <laughs> concrete. Pose. Well, a very slow one in Briatore's opinion, <laughs> uh, static one. Um, yeah. And 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 that was that was really uh, uh, you know not not the right thing to say after someone had just run a, won a couple of Grand Prix. Yeah. Well, of course, ironically, we've got the Singapore Grand Prix this mm. weekend. And uh, Jensen uh, was the runaway leader, as we know. But now yeah. coming into the last four races, and he's there with nearest challenger as his teammate Rubens Barrichello. So. Where does that leave us with Braun? Will there be any sort of favouritism coming in for either driver or is it going to be a fair fight? 
Well, as you say, it's a two-horse race now. Uh, mm. Red Bull look like they're a busted flush, uh, blaming Renault engines again. I mean, it yeah. hasn't been a good week for Renault, has it? Um, uh, we are down to a two-horse race between the Braun boys, and mm. I think for the time being at least, I think probably till the end of the season now, they'll be allowed to race each other because really only one of the two can win, so yeah. you know, um, they can both go for it. Yeah, with your feeling, I mean, Jensen's got a 14-point lead at the moment. As I mentioned, four races to go. Have mm. you got a strong feeling either way? I still think Jensen's going to do it, yeah. um, but Rubens is on fire. He's been fantastic in the last two or three races. Mm. The tricky thing, I think, is, is for Ross Braun, really, because uh, you know, he, he's very fond of both drivers. Uh, yeah. uh, Rubens, he worked with at Ferrari for many years. He's got a soft spot for Rubens. Mm. Uh, Jensen, um, he, he admires greatly for uh, when, when they were both at Honda last year, which was disaster, but yeah. Button said nothing against the team and came out of that very well. Mm. Um, uh, Ross Braun's only human. I think he'll probably want a Brit to win it, but I don't think he's going to interfere in the outcome. OK, well, talking of the Brits, uh, Lewis Hamilton has had a much better second half of the season mm. than he, he did the first half. Mm. Is it now a case of, of trying to build for next season? Will he already be looking at next season, or is it just a case of trying to bag a few more points and finish as high up as he can for this season? Well, I think he's going to bag a lot more points. Um, <laughs> McLaren aren't done with this season yet. They're bringing mm. a major upgrade of tweaks to Singapore. Um, I think Hamilton will win in Singapore. He was, right. he was clearly the fastest guy at the last race in Italy. It was a bit mm. of a duff strategy call by McLaren that lost him the race yeah. but um, uh, I, I fully expect him to, to win on Sunday which would be great and I think he's probably going to win one or two more after that Right OK so he's your top tip for the weekend He's my top tip for the weekend but you won't get great odds at home Jim <laughs> <laughs> OK just before we go um, there's a, a former uh, F1 legend yeah. who's doing quite well across the pond in, uh, in NASCAR making a few waves, so would just like to quickly tell us about that? Well, a lot of Sun readers who are big fans of Juan Pablo Montoya when he was in Formula One might like to know that finally uh, he's doing really well in America, uh, mm. in NASCAR, um, after three years of trying. He quit Formula One in a bit of a huff in yeah. uh, 2006, walked away from the McLaren team, went off to earn mega bucks in, in the NASCAR series. But this year he's really come good. He was second at the last race. He's now fourth in the in NASCAR's chase for the championship. Mm. And, and look at a, a good bet for the title, which I think will be fantastic for all of us who used to follow Montoya in Formula One, including me. OK, great stuff. Thanks as always, Chris. Now, don't forget, this weekend, Singapore Grand Prix, you can follow every twist and turn, every pit stop and every lap time on the Sun's incredible race centre, which you'll find at thesun.co.uk slash motorsport.